Okay, so tape's on. My name is uh, Detective Brad Hoover. Uh, my badge number is 6188. I'm with the Toronto Police Service Sex Crimes Unit. Uh, the, the time now is 2.05 p.m. I'm, we're presently at the Kingston Penitentiary in Kingston, Ontario, uh, in a boardroom and as thick as the main building, you'd call it. Uh, present in the room here, if uh, I could just have each of you identify yourself for the purposes of uh, the videotape that's being made. Uh, seated to my left, off camera, and um, now sitting at the table is your counsel. Just please identify yourself. Yes, certainly. It's uh, Anthony Bryant. And uh, straight across the table from me, if you could identify yourself. I'm Constable Darlene Coolis, C O U L I S, badge number 6483 from Toronto Police Service. And seated to my right, if you could just identify yourself. Please. Paul Jason Teal, aka Paul Bernardo. Thank you. And um, again, my name is Brad Hoover, and today is June the 7th, 2007. Mr. Teal, um, the reason that we're here today is uh, to speak to you in regards to a couple of ins a couple of matters. Uh, first of all, before we start, I just want you to um, make sure that you're aware that what we say is being videotaped here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to start this uh, audio tape. I forgot to do that. I just started this audio tape here. Uh, we started the interview at uh, 2.05 p.m. My name is uh, Detective Brad Hoover. Um, Paul, um, you're not presently um, being given a caution or anything, and I want you to understand that what you're saying to us today is voluntary. It means if you don't want to talk to us, you don't have to. Uh, your counsel is present, and uh, if you need to speak to him, you certainly can. Uh, but I just want to make sure that you understand that what you're saying here is voluntary. and. Um, that you're, we're interviewing you as a potential witness. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Um, just a little bit of background about um, the first time we met back uh, last year uh, in April of 2006. Um, that was in regards to a letter that you had sent uh, through the Attorney General's office that filtered down to my office uh, in regards to some admissions that you made uh, about some sexual assaults that you committed. I'm here to tell you that I have concluded that investigation and that um, there have been two offenses that I have been able to identify and um, with the information that you provided to me at that time was able to uh, conclude those matters um, as having been committed by yourself. So for that I thank you for that information. And uh, sorry, you've identified Identified the offense. Them, no, no, no. I have identified the offense that you were talking about, and uh, based on that information, I was able to conclude those cases that, uh, that actually provided enough information that I was satisfied that you were the person that committed those offenses. Okay. Now, what Does about? That make sense? And it makes sense. What okay. about ones that you thought that I came forward with, and maybe thought that I didn't do it? Was there any of those? Um, there was none that I thought that you didn't do. There was some that I didn't have enough information to either identify the offense because uh, you were unable to provide enough details at that time or um, they may not have ever been reported to the police. As you said in, when we spoke, some of them were, uh, we'll call them minor type offenses, but uh, no, I uh, offenses that may not have been reported to the police. Okay, um, problem. Uh, I turned on the TV, I waited for Peel Regional to come by. September rolls around. They, they make a public announcement, it's written on my file here, that, uh, that I lied to police and I did not commit the crimes that I said I committed on, on the offenses in Peel Region. Okay. Big problem. I have spoken to Peel Region yeah. and um, they have told me that uh, they don't have enough information at this point to identify anything that you've... Um, the, the letter that was sent to the police, or to, through to the police, wasn't specific enough to identify any offenses. Now that's something that we can talk about um, sort of following this interview and if you want to get into that we can talk about that. Well I've been sitting with this for years and it's, it's written on my file and it, it makes me seem like oh he's just this crazy, you, you guys love doing that, I'm this crazy psychopathic liar. 
why was that statement issued? Why didn't they come in and talk to me if they didn't have enough information? We were waiting on that tape. You can play that tape back. I, you know, I asked you guys, is Peel Regional going to come in? I sat there month after month after month. No one came. I turned on the TV in September. Peel, you know, declared that Paul Bernardo was, you know, this crazy liar to, to, to police. What, what, what's the fundamental problem here? Well, I, I, no, I mean, I justice the Canadian way, and, uh, and, and, and no one comes in, and now you guys are saying that you didn't have enough information? Well, I, I can't answer for them specifically as to what they did or didn't do. Um, I can tell you that because they're a separate police department, I don't have any control over what investigation that they did do. I can tell you that I have spoken with a, uh, an investigator in Peel region, and they have told me that at this point they don't have enough information to uh, move forward. They haven't been able to um, identify any offense that was specifically talked about. That statement you're giving me is much different than the public statement they said, which said I was a liar. Okay, well, I don't, I don't. It was I night and day, and they didn't come in. If they didn't have enough information, why don't you come in and get the information? Absolutely. I mean, either I'm lying or I'm not lying. And, and this goes to the crux of this argument. Either I'm a liar to you, I'm going to lie to you right now about everything, like I did to Peel Regional, according to their story, or I'm not. And, you know, I, I just, I just, I, I'm not going to sit here and you know, come voluntarily and have people come. You guys ban me from the press, you, you roll your stories over, and you constantly say that I'm a liar, I'm a liar. I made mistakes 17 years ago. Said, okay, fine, I did. But, but now we're talking about today, and you're not going to roll forward that I'm some psychopathic liar sitting in jail claiming other people's responsibilities for other crimes. This is a total cross-examination point. You want to start this thing? Lockyer is going to grab a hold of it and say, well, he lied about other crimes. You know, he's a, he's a crazy liar. Why didn't you guys resolve this? And again, I can't answer for what Peel Region did or didn't do. Jurisdictionally, we're kind of bound as well, to yeah, what takes place. But still, the good guys, the bad guys. You know what I mean? You're on the same team. Yes, we are. But as far as us investigating matters that take place outside of the actual Toronto proper, um, that's why Peel Region has their police service. And like Detective Hoover said, we can't answer as to what they did with their investigations or the, the issues that they were looking at that transpired out in their area. And, and we really can't speak to that. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's something you wish to have your counsel deal with yeah, them on, then that's something else. But unfortunately, there, we, there wasn't a lot that uh, Detective Hoover and I could do in regards to those things. Well, that's yeah, it. It whoever are watching this right thing, they, they should subpoena these guys to Peel Regional. They can bring in all the facts to show just where I lied then, if I'm a liar. That's what I say to do, because I, either I'm a liar or I'm not a liar, and I'm not a liar. But you guys are trying to paint me as one. The public, according to the public, they, they turned on the TV in September of last year, and I was this crazy liar. Uh, that's what the TV reported, and not only did they report it there, they wrote it on my file. I've got it right myself. Paul Bernardo, uh, Peel Regional said Paul Bernardo lied to police about uh, crimes he didn't commit, said he did. Okay. I mean, this is, this, that's just awful. I mean, come on. Okay. Enough manipulation, you know what I mean? Either you tell the truth or don't, otherwise the whole purpose of any interview is just stupid. Because if I'm this crazy liar, I'll be just sitting here lying to you about everything, right? Right? I mean, why wouldn't I? I'm just this crazy liar. Okay. And, and again, I don't, I don't know exactly what was said by Peel Region, and I, I'm not here to answer to what they said. And it's either you know, one it's, it's, it's one thing, it's, it, you know, I'm a human being, and, and, and to say that I'm a dangerous offender and raping and killing and all this stuff is fine. I mean, for publicity, you know, get that, you know, tough on crime, get that bad guy. But but when you go to a certain point of line, it just, I mean, it affects me totally. You know, I made mistakes, I made mistakes a long time ago. But don't say that today about me, because then we're lying, and then we got a big problem because I'm looking at you, and you're the bad guys, because I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm, I'm telling the truth, and you guys are walking around issuing statements that I lied here, I lied there. No. Okay. Well, again, th those are statements that were issued by Detective Hoover or myself. Or, or yeah, I know, but I mean, this is, it's, like a, it's Attorney General who sent you guys down here. He's fighting the case. He's taking this Baltovich back, right? So it's, it's really all the, it's the same organization. There's an Attorney General I see but, on TV talking about it. But this is a separate matter from what those issues were. But it's still the Attorney year. General's office. Yeah, yeah it <laughs> very well be, but um, like I said, we, we can't speak to anything that Peel Regional does or statements that they release out to the media um, because they have you know, it's, they a, were it's, at. it's the same thing. If I'm a liar, take the facts that the, that they have. They come down and talk to me. Any cross examine, uh, you know, any defense lawyer, can call them up and show me where I'm lying because you're not going to find it. Maybe there's a minor mistake here and there. I think I had one thing about some uh, tree driveway being where trees were. You know, memory a little bit over time. But to say that is just ridiculous. Just like you guys didn't go. Uh, you guys polygraph Carlo? You didn't ask her about it. Nobody from the attorney general went down there. Nobody cared. <clears throat> Again, it's the same. I know, but it's the same problem because you're making me out to be a huge liar, 
and, and this, this is a problem. Well, I don't, I don't have any doubt as to what you told us before. The, the facts that I can verify, I believe, were true. And, it, and from what you've told me, you haven't told me any lies yet, so I have no personal reason to, to believe that you're lying. Exactly. So, again, exactly. So, but this is, was different the story than I've got on my file. And, and, and it again, happens I don't know what's in your file because I, I'm not privy to that information or what's there or what's not there. I'm just telling you from my perspective, and from an investigative perspective into what I've looked into, to what admissions you made back in April last year to me, I'm, you know, I'm satisfied I've done what I can do as far as the investigation. If Peel, if you'd like to provide me with more information about the specific occurrences that occurred in Peel region, then we can talk about that after the focus of what we're here for today. And that's, but that's but it is part of the focus. Well, it, it is. It is. It is, and it isn't. I mean, well, I think obviously, is. directly, we're here today to deal with the uh, the Balkovich matter that you're aware of. But dealing with me, and it comes down to credibility. Well, it comes down to credibility. It absolutely, it does, and that's um, that's what we're here to talk about today. And so, if, let's let's deal with that, and then we can deal with the other stuff afterwards. Is that okay? No. Well, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Just making my point on it because. Can that be addressed sometime? Absolutely, it will. So, it should have been. We dealt with that a year and a bit ago. So, yeah. Well, not quite a year actually. A little over a year ago. Um, I have a, uh, some questions that were uh, that were given to me to to ask you in relation to the uh, uh, Balkovich matter, Robert Balkovich matter. Um, before we do that, I just want to say you understand obviously the importance of telling the truth and. and the consequences potentially of someone who lies to the police uh, and not telling the truth. I think we just covered that. Actually, I was referring, you guys tell the truth. Right. Okay. So we're aware of that. And um, in this matter, I believe that you've had some conversation with your counsel in regards to it. And um, there has been some discussion about polygraph testing in this matter. Is that true or not true? Or do you recall that? Well, you're opening up cans of worms no, everywhere. I'm, I'm I mean, just asking you a, spe a specific question. You know, that goes back to you guys polygraphed everyone with the Camaro. You didn't polygraph Carla in, in, in two years since. Have you guys gone down there and asked her? Have you settled the matter with it? Because you could say I lied or whatever about polygraph, but have you asked her? Because it, 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 it comes down to a lot of that issue. Okay. You know, I mean, have you um, asked let, her? Let Has the Attorney General me, gone down there? Okay, I don't know. Let me tell you a little bit. My involvement with the, this overall investigation of the Volkovich is very limited. Uh, the only knowledge that I have is um, as to what investigation has been done or hasn't been done is specifically what's related to the conversations I've had about this interview here today. Right. Okay. Um, who? What other witnesses there are? I don't know. Okay. What answer other to, persons there are? In answer to your question, I don't want to go off on tangents, but all these all these issues are relevant. I know you think they aren't, but oh, but they are. In answer to your question, is we had some discussion on it, but. When Corcoran from the OPP came down before Carla was released, right. I told him I'd be willing to take a polygraph on anything and everything. Would okay. you, in turn, are you going to go down before you release Carla? Just to ask her. She's not going to take it. She's going to, going to fail on, on all these issues. Did her hand cause death? Yes, it did. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Did this Tammy happen in July? Was a girl in January actually kidnapped and they got somebody. I picked up at a bar like she tried to, to, to roll over and all, all these other issues. All relevant. All relevant. And, and, so, and then I addressed it to you guys when you came back again uh, last year. I said, yeah, I'll take a polygraph on anything because I, I'm not telling a lie on the thing. Are you, have you, again, I asked the question, have you guys gone down or, you know, I know Carla's free now. I'm not, I'm not in the business of putting her in jail. It's not my thing. But my point was, did you ask her the question? Just so we get the story straight. I mean, if she refuses, well, there's, there's a reason why she's refusing. And again, you guys couldn't provide the answer. And now, you know, almost a year later, again, you don't provide the answer. So, I mean... You know, I, I don't know what you're asking me. You're asking me to take a polygraph when you aren't willing to ask her. Well, again, this this my my part of this investigation is is limited to what we're saying here today. So the the details of all of what other witnesses may or may not have been asked or done, I don't know. And I, as a as a potential witness, I'm not allowed to tell you what other oh, people yeah. have done. So that I have to sort of uh, be careful about the way that it's answered or even what you think my answer might be. Yeah, no, I just just wanted for the record that I gave you good information, which you guys could have, independent of me, could have verified my story or not. Right. And whether you guys do or do not is your business. Like I said, I'm not a prosecutor. Right. I'm not here to point the finger at anyone. But I, I showed you where to go. So if you guys don't do that, it's your business. But 
you know, to me it's like, if you didn't, why didn't you? If you want to know the truth about things. Right. So I understand that. And I understand what you're saying. So um, what we're here to talk Anyways. about today, um, obviously know that this statement um, may be used in court or may be presented to court as a, as a voluntary statement. Yeah. Okay. A polygraph obviously is not um, something that's court admissible, and I'm not sure if you're aware of that or not. But yeah, it's not used in court. Okay. Um, so the crust of what we're here to talk about is that uh, it has been suggested that uh, in the continuing case of the disappearance of Elizabeth Bain and, and the charge of murder against Robert Baltovich, that you are the alternative suspect, or an alternative suspect. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Did you kill Elizabeth Bain on June the 19th, 1990? Well, it's a loaded question. I mean, are we going to go back and, 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 and go through the, the time sequence of what happened in my life? I mean, I, I could just give a yes or no answer, but, you know, there's a lot of issues about that. Right. You know, the, the Carlos and my rule, who did what, where, when, this is why I said, did you guys, you know, go down there to get a polygraph to get, to see if she was telling the truth? Like, why didn't Bevan do it in the first place? I mean, he's polygraphing everyone with a Camaro. Why would he make a deal with someone and not give them a polygraph? It, it, it's not incomprehensible to me, uh, you know. Because now I'm sitting, my file says her version, and it's a lie. <laughs> you know, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I, you know, I'm not making frivolous points here. I mean, and now you're asking me after you, after you said Peel Regional said I'm lying about this, and then you're saying I'm lying about my profile. You're saying I'm lying if I'm better or not. Now you're saying, hey, did you kill this person? I mean, well, you're saying I'm lying here, here, and here. I could say, no, I didn't. Uh, but, I mean, you already said I'm lying here with the PO. You're saying, okay, I'm, not you know, saying I'm not saying anything no, but, about who's lying. I'm simply... Um, and I've given you directions to go to find the truth. Right. And, no one's, and, I've, no one's done that. and I've asked, and, and again, I've told you that I've um, done investigations on information that you've told me. And, and as a result of that information, I've been able to... Uh, verify in my mind where you told me the truth. So if Peel yeah. Region is lying about you or someone else is lying about you, I have no control over that or no... no it goes right to credibility. Well, absolutely it does. And that's, I guess, the, the easy way then is to, if we can go through, we'll answer the questions. And yes, I hope to be able to go through some timeline to identify where you were, what you were doing specifically in relation to this, this case. Anyways, I know I'm giving you guys a hard time being argumentative about certain things, but I mean, really, I'm a human being, and when you guys do all these things, I, I've got to, anyways, I'll, I'll try and truncate it a little bit more, but, anyways, the answer to that is, is no, but, the 800-pound gorilla in the room is, that's a life 25 sentence, you know, it really comes down to credibility, right. and, and not only credibility, but then again, timeline, I mean, between what Carlos and my roles were, respectively, and this and that, the answer is no to that question. Did you have anything to do with her disappearance? No. D did you know Elizabeth B? Not that I know of. Had you ever met her? I'm going to answer that with uh, I don't remember because if I did or I didn't, I don't remember. But I know an ex-girlfriend tried to say I might have, but I guess I don't remember. Um, you are obviously are aware of her disappearance. Do you recall when you became aware of this? Best that I can really recollect is after I was in jail. Didn't follow me as much. Um, the date, obviously, June the nineteenth, nineteen ninety, was the but but that, but so. you know other other than that, I don't remember. You know, maybe I, I heard about it before, but I can't, can't recall. Can't recall if I did or not. But I remember in jail, I had newspapers after that fact. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll sort of get into that a little bit when we, uh, I hope to go through a bit of a timeline with you as to some things that may jog your memory as to yeah, we're talking. Uh, back in that time. I mean, if you asked me what I was doing three weeks ago on Tuesday, I probably couldn't tell you unless you put some reference to it, so um, we'll hopefully be able to do that. Um, and again, obviously, uh, June the 19th, 1990, do you know what you were doing that day? Um, I, I have uh, a document here in front of me that uh, references some points in time around the, the, the June of 1990 
period from police investigation, this is what uh, indicates you may have been involved with or may have certain things that you may have done. That, uh, like to go through a couple of them that uh, sort of may sort of assist you in remembering what you were doing back in, in 1990. Um, the first part of June uh, 1990, actually June the 1st, uh, Carla had a, a doctor's appointment. where she was complaining of pains in her right side. Um, perhaps she had something to do with a rabies shot. Does that ring any bells? No, no, no. In the first part of June, you, you had a Nissan 240SX, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you were making several trips into the United States, uh, June 2nd, June 3rd, June 10th, June 16th. I think at that point you were involved with cigarette smuggling and things like that, from what I recall. Someone said no? No, that would be, no, that wasn't until after we moved in, so. Okay, so, um, making several trips to the States within a couple of days, that's, is that something? When we started the relationship, we were going over all the time, so, just for personal reasons. Okay. Um, on June the 16th, you uh, shopped at Rough Hewen, is that in the Niagara Falls, United States. Does that store sound familiar to you? Yeah, it sounds familiar. I have no idea if those are the dates, but okay. you got a receipt for I, it. I think there must be a receipt there. And again, I don't have all the details. I'm just going by what's on this sheet of paper. Uh, a black expandable binder. Is that? Okay. I think. Can't recall 100%, but. Okay. That would have been around the same time. That was about a week prior to if you purchased one of those. Elizabeth Bain going. I have no idea when I purchased it. I just okay. recall I had something like that, like an accordion binder. Okay. Um, June, the, June the 16th, again, this has been the same day in St. Catharines, you attended a movie, uh, Back to the Future 3. Do you recall when that movie came out? No idea. No. There's a receipt for a cell phone purchased at a Radio Shack at uh, the Town & Country Mall at 6366 Young Street. You remember buying a cell phone? I know I bought a cell phone around that time because when I declared bankruptcy, I handed my other one in. And I bought the, the Radio Shack. I don't know the dates. Okay. You know, whatever the that would have been the day after um, Elizabeth Bain went missing. Is that do you remember anything you were involved with around that time? You said you were going bankrupt, so what type of activity were involved in sort of on a day-to-day -day basis? The only thing I remember with the bankruptcy is that happened uh, uh, around a couple days before the, uh, the sexual assault that the um, composite came up with. That was, but if I recollect correctly, correctly, it was um, I think two days before I, I filed for that. But I couldn't even tell you that date. I just know it was sometime. In. What, what, what date did you say that was? June this? June uh, the 16th of 1990. When was that sexual assault? Uh, the one with the cops? Was it 24, 24? What, what date did you guys have? Um, there was one, there was a sexual assault in May of 1990. Was that the cops that one in May? I, I, I'm, Thinking that it is, but it doesn't say that specifically here. But shortly after that, um, my timeline's off. Um, I don't know. At the end of June of 1990, that was the original when someone identified you potentially as a Scarborough rapist, a bank. When was that? The end of that was June the 28th of 1990. Um, Lori Homolka's. 19th birthday was June the 22nd, 1990. Do you recall her 19th birthday? No. I know, I know it, was, it was around that time, but I don't specifically call her birthday. Okay. Yeah, that's the only reason that one may be simply that she was obviously then a legal drinking agent, perhaps. Drinking agent? Yeah. Way before that. So. Um, June the 21st, so after just the day after you bought a cell phone, 
be a purchase at uh, Scarborough. I'm sorry, you're saying what, 19th was this girl's? June 19th was the day she went to what, what day did I buy that? June 20th was the day you bought a cell phone. June 21st. No, see, see, I must, I must have declared bankruptcy around then because I got that cell phone in the hand. I had to hand my all my uh, items in to the tra trustee, and, and I had a Panasonic cell phone, and I handed that in, and I got the Radio Shack one. So it would have been so right around the same time. I don't think I went a month without it. I don't think so. I might have, but I, but anyways, I don't know. It's, yes. It was a while ago, so memories a bit fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, May the ninth, May the 29th, which was just before that, or about a month before that, that was the day that the police released the Congress. Oh, so it was May. So I lost a month. Yeah, so that was... Uh, See what happens when you lock a guy up for 15 years and a wind blows up. <laughs> Memory gets fuzzy. So I guess I waited a month so to get the uh, cell phone. About a month to get the cell phone. Did you recall anything? What were you, what were you doing sorry, during that month? Probably the same thing as says they're going across the border for right, before the recreational board. stuff. I know Tammy happened in July. Uh, that was, I think, the third week in July for the first time. Um, but this was back a few weeks ago. So. Okay. Um, yeah, you're right. It was big. So just prior to Tammy's birthday, there was some shopping at a Canadian Tire store on Shepherd Lurie's Avenue. Lurie's or sorry, Lori's uh, birthday. Um, two times in one day, you went to Canadian Tire on Shepherd Avenue, 1019 Shepherd Avenue. Is that normally shop at Canadian Tire stores? Back then, that time. That's before all these super center WalMarts and stuff came. Do you ever recall having any conversations uh, about the disappearance of Elizabeth Bain? No. If I, if I played you a, uh, it's going to play you a, a short audio clip. Um, it's a conversation that you had, or a conversation between uh, Tony War, who was an investigator with uh, the Toronto Police, and Carla Homolka. I'm just going to play this, see if this uh, sounds familiar or if it jogs your memory as to any conversation you may have had. Was there any discussion or has there, has there been any discussion ever about the state's disappearance? Um, I'm not sure. I I think the only thing that he ever said was about her was that her boyfriend did it or something like that. But there wasn't any real extensive discussion. But he talked about like all all of the, the women that were disappearing. And again, that, that was a conversation between uh, investigator Tony Moore with the Toronto Police Service and uh, Carla Homolka. Does that conversation, was that something you may recall saying that Carla and her talking about that? Well, it, you know, she, she went down and Paul did it. Catchphrase was a trial, Paul did it. It was Paul. And that's, it. she's continuing right there. She's going, you know, with that. The fact of the matter was, is I didn't pay attention to anything. I didn't even watch the news back then. I was too busy doing other things. I didn't pay attention. Like, the, the, the profile is a serial killer, pays attention to all the news media, this is a narcissistic personality, blah, 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 and all that crap. I don't know anything about this case now. I don't know if this guy did it. I don't really even care. I'm not a prosecutor, you know, do the right thing for society, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if he did it. I don't have facts to it from those if he did it. And I certainly didn't know about that. So to say that, for me to make, she's alleging that I made a statement, the boyfriend did it. Well, you know, some cases I have followed because I am in jail and I have nothing else to do but watch a TV. But I, I weigh the facts, you know, I take, you know, like, did OJ do it, for example? You, right. know, you, you weigh the facts about, you know, whether he did or not, he got off. So, I mean, that's, that's a lot. But I would have had to weigh the facts. I don't know the facts in the circumstances, so there's no way I can make a, a statement such as that. How could I say he did it if I don't know the facts of the case? So, no, she's, she's, she's just incorrect. Okay. And it may depend on when that conversation took place with, uh, between 
between her and the, uh, the investigator. Well, Warren, wasn't he back when the, the deal was made? You know? And uh, that was Warren, if I remember reading the transcripts, that was a name from mm -hmm. uh, day one, uh, when she was signed her little 12-year deal, no polygraph required. Hey, I'm, I'm giving you the truth there. You guys can prove me wrong. Go down there, ask her. You'll get a no. I keep telling you, no one does it. But, um, but, you know, so that sounds like a conversation. But that's what you do. You want to blame it all on the other person. You know, you can paint that, that scenario. You know, like a psycho, psychopath scenario. Okay. Um, do, you, do you know Robert Balkovich? Just seen him on, uh, you know, the entire flash on TV or whatever. Like I said, I, I purposely avoided this case. Right. I, I, I don't like this, this shit in my mind, you know what I mean? You know, anything to do with... You know, unfortunately, when Carla came out, I watched and tried to discern truth back between fiction a couple of years ago. But otherwise, you know, I don't like to, to get into these things. I've had a hundred lifetimes full of this stuff, you know, so, and I, and I don't want my mind poisoned with this and this and this. So I, in this case, I know it as much as possible, but I have seen this video, you know, it's based on TV. Right. So. Um, anything else you would like to tell us about this investigation? Time now is uh, 2.35, and uh, we'll conclude uh, this portion of our interview.